So as we start to think about this contracting economy, uh, their expectation or, or their kind of promise to the market is that they're going to keep raising interest rates. The market, uh, as of maybe two weeks ago, was still thinking there was going to be 10 interest rate increases this year. There was going to be a 300 basis point interest rate by the end of the year. Uh, is your expectation that they'll continue to raise rates all the way through the year or will they at some point pause it? Do we maybe get a rate cut at some point? What, what are you expecting to happen with interest rates? Yeah, all of those things. I mean, I think they will pause the increases and maybe eventually reduce rates. We'll see. But even if they just pause the increases, that counts as an easing. Uh, they've, they, they've, they've taken back what they've promised to deliver. And remember, as inflation continues to get higher and higher and higher, real interest rates keep falling. Even if the Fed doesn't officially reduce nominal rates, if the inflation rate goes from 8% to 10% or 12% and the Fed still got the Fed funds rate, you know, wherever it ends up being 1% or 2%, then rates are effectively being reduced. But you have to remember that the rate hikes that the Fed is promising are inadequate. They're not promising to raise rates nearly enough to actually bend the inflation curve and bring it back down to 2%. You're not going to take 8% inflation and make it 2% inflation by taking 0% interest rates and making them 2 or 3%. That is still a historically ultra stimulative monetary policy, but more important than just the interest rates. It's the quantity of money that is important. The Fed has to massively withdraw money from circulation. And what the public doesn't understand is it's had this massive increase in the size of government. Nobody's taxes have been raised. Nobody's benefits have been cut. So where did all this government come from? How did we afford this massive expansion in government? We paid for it through inflation. We printed a bunch of money, right? We ran these big deficits, the Federal Reserve monetized the deficits, and we paid for government with inflation. Now the public is demanding lower inflation. Well, inflation is simply the, the way we pay for all the government that the public also demanded. Well, you, you don't have a free lunch. So the only way to get rid of the inflation is to pay for government some other way with taxation. So the only way to lower inflation is to raise taxes on the middle class substantially, not on the rich. There's not enough money there. Plus, if you tax the rich, you reduce investment. That's a problem. You need to tax the middle class or the poor because that reduces spending. And that's what the government has to do. They have to stop people from spending money they didn't earn, meaning money that's not associated with productive activity. You can't just spend money unless you help produce stuff to give that money value. The problem is we've been printing all this money instead of paying uh, taxes. Now, people think, oh, you're heartless, Peter. You want the middle class and the poor to pay higher taxes. I don't. What I would rather see is the government slash spending, cut spending on the military, cut spending on Social Security and Medicare and all sorts of things. You know, get rid of the Space Force that Donald Trump, you know, stuck. We have to cut government spending. I'd rather do that. Now, of course, that's going to affect the middle class because a lot of middle class people are drawing Social Security checks. But unfortunately, the government has to tell the truth to the American public. Either we drastically cut government spending, dramatically raise taxes, or inflation is here to stay. Right? We can't get rid of inflation without cutting government spending or raising taxes. But either way, it's the middle class that is going to foot the bill. Do you expect the Federal Reserve at some point in the next 24 months to change their 2% inflation target to 25 3 3%? Like, will they change that target inflation rate? You know, it's it, it, it would really be are ridiculous to do that because let's say inflation is eight or 10 percent you know does it matter if you raise the target from two to two and a half i mean you're nowhere near two and a half i think they would look ridiculous to raise the target when they're still miles away now let's say they raise the target to seven or eight percent you know but that would scare the hell out of the markets they would never do that so i don't know if they're ever going to raise the target I, I i just don't think they'll ever get close enough to two percent to to even you know, have a rational basis for doing that. I mean, that would assume that, hey, they got down to two and a half percent. And they're like, you know what? This is as low as we're going to get. Let's just raise our target rather than try to get it down an extra half a percent. But I don't think they're ever going to come close enough that they, they, they would look too ridiculous to lower a target that they're not even close to. 
In the next decade, what do you think the lowest inflation rate that we're going to see is? Do you, can they get it under 5%? Can they get it under 3%? What, what do you think is possible uh, for them to actually achieve? Well, they could. I just think they're not willing to do what it takes to do it. Right? Okay. I mean, sure, anything is possible, but what's probable? What are vote-seeking politicians more likely to do? And so in my mind, the most logical way that they're going to get the CPI below 5% is to rig it some more, is to make more changes in the CPI so that a 12% inflation rate will be recorded as a 4.5% inflation rate. Right? So they're not going to actually get the rate down. They just may succeed in lying about how high the rate is by coming up with additional ways to change the CPI. In fact, they've already done that. They made some changes to the CPI in the beginning of this year that are pro is probably going to shave a little bit off of it. And that's why they did it. But inflation is so high that even if they knock off 1% or 2% based on you know, rigging the books, you know, it's still a big number.